So I want to talk about Mushoku Tensei again, but in this video I am going to drop some spoilers, very minor spoilers indeed, but some of these spoilers are pretty obvious, some and most of you probably already know these spoilers, but I want to talk about them so I want to give a pre-warning because if I drop them ahead anyway people are going to get upset, so of course I'm going to be dropping very minor spoilers that most of you probably already know, but it's for contextual reasons and most of it is to do with Rudy's wives. So, of course, right now Rudy has two wives in the story, so I'm using the word wives. You know what I mean when I say it, and why I've st structured it in that way. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, I wanted to talk about the whole situation with the end of Season 2, and how this whole situation has been kind of twisted into this kind of weird situation of people only liking Norn's perspective on things because it's what they want to hear. And I've definitely had some heavy, heavy attacks laid on me over my last three videos on Mushoku Tensei and also some of my recent tweets, posts on X slash Twitter going over the situation of the episode. And again, in nowhere have I ever defended Rudy's behavior. I have simply done three things. Explained why the situation has happened the way that it's happened. Explained why Norn should have never been part of the discussion between Rudy and Sylphiet. And I'll get into a little bit more of that afterwards. And then also, Sylphiet's perspective. But in nowhere have I actually defended Rudy's behavior in how he has gone against his own wish, well, gone against his own promise. So Rudy has made a promise, or did make a promise, to Sylvia saying, no, I'm not going to take a second wife, no, I'm not going to cheat on you, and Rudy has, in fact, cheated on Sylvia from his perspective and from Norn's perspective. From, but from Sylvia's perspective, she had kind of already expected that Rudy would, at some point, take a second wife. And I've noted on this in some posts where I've talked about how she kind of expected he would possibly hook up with the two beast girls or one of them. And so she kind of already accepted that at some point he was going to do this. She even states it at the final part of the episode saying this is Rudy. I mean, to be honest, Sylphiet knows Rudy better than Rudy does at this point. But Rudy kind of made a lot of lofty promises that he just really couldn't uphold. He talked a big game and he failed at it miserably. So yes, he failed. But from Sylvia's perspective, she kind of already predicted this would happen in some degree. I think, again, you know, it would have been in a perfect world, Rudy coming to Sylvia and explaining the situation would have been much better. But because of how things played out, which is again me explaining the situation, it was never going to work out that way. And Roxy, depending on your perspective, you could see her as taking advantage of Rudy or not taking advantage of Rudy. It really depends on the perspective. But then Roxy has come out and said, yeah, she took advantage and she had her own her alternative motives. So this is the thing about Mashuku Tensei that I've always found fascinating. And I've stated this before, is that there's no real one single interpretation of the story. I've seen many people say that it's a redemption story, but many people have tried to say it's not a redemption story. Many people say that it's a story about a second chance. Many people say it's not. Many people say it's a story about change. And many people say, well, Rudy hasn't changed. Or maybe it's more about acceptance. And to me, I think all the answers are wrong and right. I think it is a mixed bag. As I've always said, a picture says a thousand words. I feel like Mashuku Tensei is like that. It's a piece of art. Well, it is, because it's a piece of literature that is a form of art. And But it's like a, a drawing. As the saying goes, a picture says a thousand words. I feel like there is many different interpretations on how you can perceive Mashuku Tensei as a story. Whether it is about redemption, change, second chance, self-fulfillment, wish fulfillment, consequences. However you want to perceive it, I think there is room for all of those to be discussed. But I think one of the things that a lot of people kind of do with Mashuka Tensei is they over-criticize Rudy on some of the dumbest, dumbest things out there. And by that, I think a lot of that happens because a lot of people feel like they have to criticize Rudy on every facet of his life. Even when he does good decisions, they feel like they need to criticize him still when he's making good decisions. Because, oh, if you actually defend even one thing Rudy does throughout his entire life, that instantly means you're defending everything he does. And that has been used on me. I get comments still to this day where people say, you're defending everything Rudy does because you defended one thing that he did. And it's like, 
how old are you? Five? And then they'll come sc screaming in, going, you're just straw manning. But then they themselves are trying to create a straw man of creating all these things that I've said and then trying to disassemble it. And it's like, well, no, I've never stated those things. Rudy made a mistake. He cheated on his wife. But from Sylvia's perspective, she kind of expected this. She was okay with this. She gave permission. Then people say, well, actually, she only gave permission if she couldn't conceive a wife. Well, yes and no. Again, it depends on the perspective. She always stated, and she says in the episode, by the way, which is kind of funny because they, they pick one thing out of the episode and say, well, she said this, and then they kind of ignore the rest of it. Sylvia had already anticipated that Rudy would take a second wife. She just said, hey, if I can't conceive one, you can have a second wife if you want. It just can't be Nana Hoshi. That was her stipulation. It can't be Nana Hoshi. And Rudy said, no, I'm not going to cheat on you, blah, 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 blah. He made his big speech and he failed miserably. He's a dum-dum. But she, you, well, the way I perceive it, and again, this is the thing. The way I perceive it is that she used it as a proxy to start a conversation. And be like, hey, you can take a second wife. This is the reason. But she kind of was using that as a reason to give him to say, you can go take one. Because she already knew that his drive was so heavy, if you get what I'm saying, that he was going to take another wife regardless. Because of how much he is a, a pervert. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, he is one. So she already was pushing that notion because she knew what Rudy was like. So she was trying to say, hey, it's okay if you do want to take one. And she was using that as one of the reasons. It wasn't the only one. It was just the one that she used at the time. But I feel like some people just use that as like, oh, well, she only gave permission because of that. It's like, no, she was, she was kind of opening it up. But this is the thing. You could interpret it either either. How I interpret it is that she kind of opened the whole can of worms up and said, you know, I'm fine with it. And to prove that is that she was okay with Eris. So, yeah, I did warn people. With Eris, she was okay with it. But that time, Rudy asked for permission. But then he had well and truly advanced knowledge that something was going to happen that was going to lead to Eris reappearing and him having to resolve that situation. But then that comes up to another point as well. People use Norn as a catalyst to saying, well, Norn's perspective is she doesn't condone it and she's the normal moral standard of our current society. No, she's a hypocrite. She is a hypocrite, which Sylvia even points out. But people use the excuse, oh, but Paul already had a wife before she was born. And she never opposed Paul having a second wife. Even after Rudy had the second wife, she still then opposes it. And then suddenly is okay with Roxy. The reason why she is so opposed to Rudy having a second wife at that time was because she was angry with him about Paul's death. She saw it as him going off and having, you know, relationships and cheating while her father died and he was just gallivanting off with another woman while her current while well, his current wife was having a child. So Norn was very angry, rightfully so, but she was angry at Rudy over the whole situation. She needed someone to lash out with lash out to. She was emotionally compromised. And again, she should have never been in that room when that discussion happened. Because what Rudy did has nothing to do with her. Rudy having Norn in that room is a mistake on his part. And people say, oh, but he said he allowed her to be rude. Yes, he did. And I believe it's a mistake. Because Rudy is overcompensating. He's up he is emotionally compromised as well. He's upset. He's not thinking clearly. And he's thinking, oh, I'll have everyone in the room to make it all fair and all the rest. But in reality, and even Ed, psychologist, agrees with me on this. He has even DM'd me. He's made tweets agreeing with this take that Norn should have never been in the room. She has no bearing on the situation. She is a sister, not a wife, not a concubine, not a secret lover. She is a sister. At that point, she, Rudy might as well have had his mother in the room with Lilia. So why have a stepsister and a full sister, but not the two mothers? Like, again, it's weird. Rudy was emotionally compromised. And you can say, oh, but they live in the same house. Norn lives in the dormitories. So she comes and goes. So again, she should have never been in the room. Rudy is just overcompensating because he feels great guilt towards his mistakes of cheating on his wife. So at the end of the day, Rudy should have only had Sylvia in the room with Roxy in the room next door. 
on standby so if Sylvia wanted to talk to her privately or with Rudy, she could. And then it should have been in a single room with him and Sylvia and they should have sat down and had a conversation about what Rudy did wrong and explained himself. And then Sylvia could either ask for Roxy to come in the room and talk it out or not talk to her. That's how it should have played out in my point of view. Norn and Aisha should have never been in the room. But the only reason why people want Norn in the room is because she said what other people wanted to hear. And you know how I know? Because I've got tweets or posts proving that people are not angry at Rudy cheating so much. They're angry that Sylphie had accepted it. They actually say in their own posts that they're more angry about Sylphiet accepting it and that's what they don't want to accept. So in their view, Sylphiet's opinion does not matter because it's not what they wanted to hear. Which demonstrates that they themselves do not care about the woman being affected has to say about it. Sylphiet's opinion in their point of view does not matter even though she's the one being cheated on in their point of view because she says what they don't want to hear. So now it doesn't matter. That's kind of misogynistic. Because that's themselves saying a woman's opinion only matters when it's what they want to hear. Which is why I've been pointing out the level of hypocrisy in the community. Because people are basically saying her opinion, and I'm repeating again to be very clear, they are saying her opinion only matters if, it's, if it, she says what they want her to say. Which is hypocritical. That's why this whole situation is hilarious. And then people turn around and say, Oh, but you're straw manning. I've shown tweets and evidence. And people know that this is the argument being done. Because it's everywhere right now. People are more angry <laughs> that she accepted it. And to point out, by the way, how hypocritical Norn is, is that she really doesn't bat an eye when Rudy has a third wife. When Eris appears in the whole situation, she doesn't bat an eye. And might I add after reading more and more and more of the light novels, there are other things that she does that are hypocritical to her religion, but I don't want to spoil that far into the light novels because that is going a bit more deeper. But she is not some person that upholds her religion very well. She picks and chooses how she wants to take her religion. And that's because she was brought up with her grandmother, with the religion doctrine jammed in her, but she doesn't, isn't really that big on it. And even... Again, her own mother picks and chooses a little bit because this is actually a real reflection of the real world. A lot of people that are religious do kind of cherry pick what they want to take out of the rule sets. That's human nature. And that's how I perceive the story is that a lot of it is about human nature and the human realisticness of it. And then you talk about the whole consequences. A lot of people were angry that Rudy didn't receive consequences for this. But what I've noticed, and this is where they get really angry and scream straw man, but this is what I've seen myself, is that people seem to be always demanding consequences when Rudy does something negative. But whenever Rudy does something positive, they get angry that... It, if he receives something positive in return. They expect him to receive nothing for positive reinforcement, but constantly punished for negative things. But if anything, they want him to be punished even when he does positive things. So really, all they want in a story is for Rudy to suffer because of a mistake in his past life, which really, in my opinion, isn't that big of a deal. He cranked it out over some lolly stuff. Now again, we're sticking to the light novels, not the web novel, because the web novel is the rough draft. We're sticking to light novels. He was cranking it out to some lolly stuff, and so people see him as a fat, disgusting human being. But at the end of the day, is he really this horrible monster? No. Has he really made some stupid mistakes? Yes. The way he lived in a hobble, the way he didn't care about his parents funeral the way he goes about that is pretty messed up and pretty horrible and he deserved to be kicked out for it but again people make it sound like he's some mass genocidal maniac going around planets destroying everything they make it sound like he's committed crimes that really seem a little bit over exaggerated he's definitely made some major mistakes and there is definitely criticism there for it but i feel like some people do over criticize him for some things that really he hasn't done and whenever he does positive things and he tries and helps people and he tries to be the better person and he tries and grows people still want him to be punished and people want him to be punished for things that really aren't his fault you look at the whole situation with him and sarah 
people really, really dug into him over that. But you've got to understand, both of them were at fault and both of them made mistakes because they both were young and irrational. They were both going through a lot of stuff through their own minds. Both very different, but both were going through their own internal dilemmas. And so it led to a clash between them. But rather than understanding why things happened the way they happened, and having an understanding and having a bit of sympathy for both parties, they just wanted to lash out at Rudy as he's the next evil World War II person. And that's where I find a lot of the Mushuki Tensei hate to be very blindsided. And that's why I do have that perspective that Norn is kind of the voice of the haters. Because a lot of the haters for Mushuki Tensei always have this hatred towards Rudy having two wives. But when you look at a lot of other series that have massive harems, much more bigger, and how he, how those main protagonists go about it, are a much more weirder and a little bit flimsy. They just kind of like walk down the street and six girls go, we love you, we're going to marry you. And then that's the end of it. It feels a little bit too forced. And that's why I feel like in this day and age, some series like High School DxD are probably going to cause a lot of controversy. And it's why I'm very fascinated to see about that. And honestly, that is a good video that I should cover at a later date. Would High School DxD survive in this day and age? And should it have another season in that day and age? Because honestly, with how people act, it makes me wonder that. But I don't think people would actually hate High School DxD for being a harem. Because at the end of the day, the only, one of the things that I feel like people hate Rudy for is because he was ugly. And I've noticed that because I've watched other series that have a similar kind of transformation like Rudy, and people don't seem to have that same hate, or they do have that same hatred. I was just thinking to myself, there's another anime that has a similar, like, reincarnation kind of thing, like an older guy reincarnated as a young boy, relives his life, and does kind of, like, build this little miniaturized harem of assassins that he manipulates. Some of you are going to know what I'm referring to. And no one complains about that, by the way. And that's more in the area of the G word than what people are claiming Rudy does. But people have a problem with Rudy doing it, but not with the other anime. And that's what I was thinking of just then while I was saying that, and that's why I kind of flipped my words a little bit. But there is another anime as well where a main protagonist goes from being fat and bullied to being a stud muffin with heaps of friends, and people hated that anime because of the transformation. And that's what I've noticed. A lot of people seem to hate characters that are fat and ugly and are bullied and then suddenly change their life and turn it around and then suddenly they get angry. What that reason is, I've spoken about it and I think there's a lot more to it on a psychological level. But again, I'm no psychologist, I'm not an expert. I can simply only go based on my perspective of how people see it. Another thing though too is also is I do feel like some people are being overly critical, and I mentioned this before, of Rudy simply because they feel like they have to or else they're being told that they're just blind fanboying. And this is a comment that's been shoved in my face saying you might as well sit on Rudy's lap, the guy cheated and you can't handle him being rep reprised or punished and it's like no, he cheated, he made a mistake. I've stated that in multiple videos throughout my entire light novel series. I've criticized him for mistakes. The points that I'm making when it comes to things like consequences is not every negative action is going to have a consequence. That's just not how real life works. It's not a video game. In real life, people do do bad things and there's no repercussions to them. That is real life. That's how it works. And some people do good things and have repercussions, like negative repercussions. And you think, well, that's not fair, yes, because life isn't fair. Life is not balanced. It is a roller coaster of goods and bads mixed in amongst decisions that we make that may be perceived as good and bad. That is how real life works. And I think this is the p issue that people aren't understanding Rumashuki Tensei, is it is a reflection of how the real world works. Rather than a goody good two shoe perfect outline world that feels like almost like a video game. And that's the thing about a lot of isekais, is a lot of isekais feel like video games that have these weirdly scripted stories that feel forced and scripted. Not all of them, but there are many isekais, and I think a lot of people watch those and just expect that as the normal go-to. And that's why I call them the junk food of the isekai community, because they are very generic copy-paste, feel-like game scripts, where they feel very formulaic. 
But then, when you go into series like Mashuku Tensei, Moonlit Fantasy, Shield Hero, and even sometimes they might feel a little bit scripted in some areas, but some of these stories don't have that same script system. They have these highs and these lows and these unpredictabilities, and that's when they get upset because they can't handle the unpredictability of how life functions. And then you wonder why these people are having mental breakdowns on social media platforms because they can't handle living in the real world. And I think that's the issue with Mashuku Tensei is these people cannot handle the real world because they've been sheltered so much on social media that when they see a story that is a reflection of the real world, they freak out because they realize that is how the real world works and they don't want to accept it. That's how I've been perceiving it, that's how I see it, and I know it's a long ramble, but I think it's an interesting discussion to be had, and I don't even know how I'm gonna title the video, but I wanted to talk about it as a whole, because I think this discourse is getting much more spiraling, and I find it interesting, I'm gonna keep going at it, but I think if this is how bad things got in the end of season two, Oh my god, season 3 is going to be pure, pure chaos. Season 3 is going to be magnificently chaotic. And I cannot wait for it. Because I think that's where people are really going to see the chaotic nature of life itself. And the goods and the bads. And how one bad situation can warp someone into being a very bad person. And making a lot of flawed mistakes. And that's the thing. As I've stated... Rudy has definitely made some mistakes and there's definitely room for criticism, but I do also feel like some people, and again, not all, again, I'm saying some, not all, and this is the other thing, people are over-exaggerating my words, doing the exact same, I do feel like some people are over-exaggerating some things that Rudy has done. There's room, but don't go overboard. And I think people need to stay grounded on reality of what is going on in Mashuka Tenso. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Expect more of these because I'm definitely really getting the juices going again. I'm really enjoying these long for philosophical debates. And I love doing these videos. I love these philosophical debates. I did them with Darmachi and I loved doing them. And I look forward to doing more on Darmachi on these kind of philosophical debates. But I'm going to keep doing them for more animes. I'd like to do these every Wednesday but we'll see what happens so again tell me what you think but don't be toxic because I'm just gonna laugh at you and probably make a video talking about it so again love to know your thoughts but if you like this video hit the like subscribe and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video